Welcome back, Vinyl Community. Another update for you guys with a recent thrift haul I happened upon. One of my local stores, one of my favorite uh, digging spots. Always nice when you come up on a large uh, collection, obviously from the same previous owners. You can probably tell by the, by the tastes. What we're listening to is one of those. Very uh, obscure local press. Can't find too much info about this one. But jazz, as you can probably tell, jazz flute based. Private press out of Vancouver, Canada. It was a blind buy, but looked too interesting to leave behind. This is uh, from an LP called Ghost Plays for Mr. S. Pretty out there stuff. He's there. As the back cover says, this album was composed and performed by Eric Ghost with empathy for Mr. S, who is currently imprisoned for what today's society has defined as a felony. The loss of physical freedom is always hard to endure, and it can only be hoped that the music on this disc will set the listener's mind free. So that is recorded at Psy Chord Studios, Vancouver, BC, mid-1970s. Both sides kind of uh, no real separate tracks, uh, but all kind of themed with a, a storyline. Uh, side one, warning, bust, trial, sentence, federal pen, and side two is entitled deliverance, minimum security, first parole refusal, the long stretch to freedom. So kind of both sides, kind of one long seamless suite with a jazz flute and some kind of uh, psychedelic elements, I would say. Free jazz. Eric Ghost. Can't find too much info about this guy. This actually goes for a fair amount of money. Uh, he's got one other uh, LP that also is uh, in a similar price range. Apparently he died quite young. Multi-instrumentalist. Plays everything here himself. Flute, drums, keys. Eric Ghost. Just keep that running. Also from the same thrift hall, found two by Phil Oakes. Folk singer I've kind of been curious about, seen his records around. This one's called Pleasures of the Harbor. These are all in uh, very nice shape, by the way, well cared for, A&M. Late 60s on this one. He was kind of a uh, folk singer who, um, Kind of the same generation as Dylan, same very lyrical style of, uh, of writing, uh, very committed to political causes. There's quite a strong political uh, undercurrent to his work. There's a long track on here called The Crucifixion, which is apparently uh, about the JFK assassination. Uh, it's often compared to Bob Dylan, whereas Bob Dylan kind of moved away from the, the protest angle of the folk movement. Phil Oakes did not. Ultimately, uh, Died of suicide, apparently. There was also a tape from California. That was there at the same time. Van Dyke Parks is involved in this one. a &M. Bill Oaks. Very literate, very lyrical lyrics. Uh, back to the jazz tip. There was two by another jazz flute guy, Canadian Mo Kaufman. Two 70s ones by him. This one is called uh, Jungle Man. GRT label, both mid-70s, I believe, and there was also uh, museum pieces, both very similar, kind of uh, light jazz flute pieces mixed in with some jazz funk. I think there's a drum break on this album, and uh, kind of in that Stevie Wonder style of uh, soulful funk that was going on at the time in the early 70s, but Cat's trying to get in the video, <laughs> inspired no doubt by Steve's cat, Steve Carlson. There was uh, Al DiMiola, jazz guitarist, Land of the Midnight Sun. I almost left this one behind. Ended up getting into a chat with another uh, fellow who was there digging. He was uh, apparently worked at a record store, and uh, he kind of was briefly looking at this and then picked it up, and I realized that it's got Chick Corea on it, uh, Jaco Pastorius on bass, Alphonse Muzon on drums. Couldn't pass that one up. Nice jazz guitar fusion. More jazz guitar. There was three LPs by Larry Coriel there. The Restful Mind. 
That's on Vanguard. Uh, heavily acoustic oriented here. Uh, a lot of uh, kind of classical themes done in a jazz guitar style. Also some Indian uh, tabla and sitar. Uh, it's Coriel Khan. That's him on a live setting with Steve Khan. Jazz guitar again, acoustic. Two for the road. Uh, 1977 on that one on Arista. And there was even a guitar instruction record there. Whoever owned these records must have been a jazz guitarist. Uh, this is put out by Guitar Player Magazine and is basically him uh, demonstrating guitar techniques and uh, occasionally explaining things, spoken word. Interesting. Larry Coriel, great jazz guitarist. Uh, another, another one right here, you can see the theme here. Jean McLaughlin, Bello Horizonte. This is a little bit later one by him, 1981 on Warner Brothers Records. Very, uh, very chill on here. Very, uh, very relaxed. Nice, peaceful album. Uh, getting into a little bit of rock in the same hall. There's one by Terry Garthwaite. She was uh, one of uh, two female lead singers of a group called San Francisco Bay Area group called Joy of Cooking. Uh, this is her solo album from uh, 1975 on Arista. She mixes up uh, kind of bluesy rock with some folk with uh, kind of jazz, traditional jazz phrasing like the classic singers, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan, and those kind of, uh, those kind of ladies. She can, does that on a couple of songs, as well as some more uh, flat out rockers. Some uh, very, very beautiful songs on here. Very nice album, very talented lady. Mixes up a lot of genres. Uh, this is one I had already, but uh, it's a better condition copy. Graham Nash, Songs for Beginners, classic solo album by him. I have it on a Red Atlantic pressing. This is the tri-color. This is better condition, so nice to pick that up. Classic one by him. There was also some UK power pop there. Yachts, SOS. This is from 1979. Never heard of them before. It looked kind of interesting. Polydor label. And a catchy, uh, catchy tracks on there punchy power pop of the late 70s, very early 80s. I'll leave uh, some sound clips to what I can find for you guys here. Uh, last one out of this particular thrift haul, Jesus Christ Superstar box set. I've kind of been curious about this for a while. Uh, seen it in thrift stores many times, usually not good condition or overpriced or whatever. Uh, found, this time found it for two bucks in the same thrift store haul. Very nice condition. Only problem is it's missing the booklet but I can probably uh, find another copy with it somewhere. Uh, very hard rocking musical of the late 60s, early 70s. Got to Ian Gillen, Murray Head, Yvonne Elliman, uh, lots of uh, well-known performers on there and it rocks hard too for, uh, for the time. Uh, getting into a bit more of my Mr. Bongo and Light in the Attic haul that I had when they had their sales on. A uh, couple of um, Afrobeat ones from Mr. Bongo label. Pat Thomas introduces Marijata. It's a mix of reggae and Afrobeat. Lovely Mr. Bongo pressing, lovely music. Got three by Ebo Taylor. Ebo Taylor, My Love and Music. Self-titled, these are all on Mr. Bongo label, reissues. Very nice pressings, and uh, not going to try and pronounce that one, Twer Nyam. These are all from the mid to late 70s with a mix of uh, Afrobeat with reggae. Reggae was enormously popular in Africa at the time. Also uh, picked up some CDs. These were crazy cheap from Mr. Bongo, uh, basically five bucks each. Got uh, one of the same albums on CD for listening in the car. CK Man and his Carousel 7, Funky High Life, exactly what you get. Banda Black Rio, Brazilian, Maria Fumaca. It's instrumental, kind of a light jazz funk. Tim Maia, it's kind of the Brazilian Barry White, maybe a little funkier. Celia, again, Brazilian Samba. Nice one from them. And two various artists comps. The original sound of Mali. 
and the original, whoops, throwing things around, the original sound of Burkina Faso. Excellent compilations, just five bucks each. Couldn't pass those up. Uh, last one I'll show today, one from my Light in the Attic haul. I got about four or five titles from them all together. Uh, picked this one up. This one I was kind of curious about. The Family of Apostolic. Uh, this was basically... Apostolic was a label, sub-label set up by the Vanguard label you saw in that uh, John McLa or Larry Coriel album. Uh, set up in the late 60s, Apostolic was a studio set up by John Townley and uh, kind of his loose, uh, loose band of friends and family members, dubbed the Apostolic family. Very uh, hippie, late 60s, hippie folk mixed with world music elements. Uh, there's uh, Indian music. Uh, Chinese opera, uh, Scottish bagpipes, they kind of blend all these influences in. They use the studio, they set up the studio to kind of uh, experiment with multi-tracking and uh, just uh, freewheeling hippie folk based vibes. Very interesting stuff here. So that's what I've got for you today guys, hope you enjoyed. Uh, as I said, sound clips to what I can find I'll put in the description box. Also I tend to post things on Facebook and Instagram with uh, more information than I can usually manage on video. So uh, check those links out down below. I want to thank everybody for watching, cheers and take care.